Hey guys, Kevin here with eTrailer and today I'm going to be showing you how to install the Tucson Direct Link Trailer Brake Controller here on our 2018 Chevy Silverado 1500. Up top here you can see it's going to revert back to our brake sensitivity and there's going to be 20 different sensitivity levels depending on if your trailer is above or below 10,000 pounds uh, gross vehicle weight rating so you can easily adjust that up and down and then also we can go to the side here and that's going to give us our low speed brake so essentially if you're going at a low speed you don't have to worry about the brakes fully um, actuating this is basically just going to kind of get you a more smoother braking power whenever you're driving through the city or maybe you're hitting a whole lot of stoplights and you don't really want to have it slam on the brakes every single time you can adjust this get a little bit lower and then we also have our max brake limit. So right now I got that just set at 20%, but obviously you could change that as well. If you need to change any of the settings while you're on these pages, you wanna click in that center and then you can adjust it. And up top, you can see that's what we're currently at. The bottom one is gonna be what we're changing it to. But for our purposes, I'm just gonna leave it at 20%. If we click over a few more times, we can see our trans temperature. So because we're hooked into the OBD2 sensor with our control module, it's going to track a few different things. It's going to have uh, your power connections, your brake switch voltage, uh, your blue wire output, so the output to your brakes itself. Um, it's going to check the engine RPM, so that's how it's going to know whether or not you're at a slow speed or if you're up at highway speeds. Um, it's also going to get that transmission temperature, which you are seeing right here, and then there's just... Uh, a few other connections that it can kind of check and then if you have any issues it's going to pop up down here in that center portion and tell you if there's any issues. This brake controller works with electric or electric over hydraulic brake actuators. Uh, not every electric brake controller does work with electric over hydraulic so this one is going to stand out since it's going to let you work with both so if you ever switch your trailer over from electric to disc brakes and you need that electric over hydraulic you don't have to swap out your brake controller. It's also going to work with uh, trailers with up to four axles. Most of the time when you see uh, these electric or electric over hydraulic uh, brake controllers, it's only going to give you usually two or three axles. So this one's going to give you quite a bit more capacity. Typically with a proportional brake controller, it's going to have an inertia sensor in it so that it knows when you're starting to decelerate. With this one, it doesn't just because it's going to hook into the OBD2 sensor and it already knows what the RPM of your engine's at. So it knows when you're decelerating. So you don't ever have to worry about that inertia sensor ever being damaged or maybe just improperly functioning. Um, a lot of the times if you have a proportional brake controller with one and you don't have it at a certain angle or if it gets knocked, maybe when you're getting in and out of your, tra uh, your truck and you accidentally hit it with your knee, you can kind of just throw it off and then that can end up causing issues with your brake controller. This, you just don't have to worry about it. Now we've gone over some of the features of our direct link, let's go ahead and show you how we installed it. For the first step of our installation, we're going to need to find a good spot for our control module to sit. Now typically with these kind of brake controllers uh, and other similar ones like the Red Arc, Topro, Elite, or Liberty, um, they have a separate control module that you can kind of tuck off to the side and then just have that small little control knob to actually work the brake controller. So typically what I like to do is come down to the bottom of the dash right here. There's going to be a little box with some plug-in ports. You can typically just mount that up on there. Uh, on ours, it is a little big. It's not really going to match up too well with our holes. Um, so we are going to have to kind of rig this a little bit different. I probably will end up zip tying just one side through. So you can go ahead and take this off. We're going to drill a couple holes. Uh, go ahead and grab yourself a marker or something so you can kind of mark out exactly where those uh, bracket holes are on your control module. All right, now that we've got these two holes marked out, we can go ahead and just drill that out. All right, so I ended up changing my mind. I'm gonna move them down just to the edge, just so it's just past that. That way it's not blocking any of our other ports. Go ahead and drill that out. Now that our holes are drilled out, we can go ahead and zip tie it. I'm just going to run it so that the uh, clip portion of the zip tie is on the inside here. So we'll place that through. And if you really wanted to, you could also use some 
nuts and bolts instead i just find zip ties are a lot easier and they're not really going to ever be under any tension to where they could break put that in tighten it down and then we'll just repeat this on the other side so before we get back in the cab i just want to talk about some of these wiring uh, harnesses that are going to come with your kit just because it's a little bit easier to see it while we're out here. So right here, we're going to have this wiring harness that's going to hook into our OBD2 sensor, and it's going to get a bunch of different stats from our vehicle as we're towing, and it's going to give you a whole bunch of useful information. So you can pop that on. You're going to want to make sure that you kind of screw down those connectors on there too, and that's going to hold it in place, prevent it from being able to pop off or get a loose connection. You can set that to the side. Um, and then for our controller, so we're going to have two different sets of wires. So if you really wanted to kind of hide this in your dash and you had to go quite a long ways, um, then you would go ahead and go with that one. Or you can go with this one that's got kind of that curl in it and kind of just gives you easy access to it. And that's kind of be the one that we use today just because of where our neighbor wants this controller placed inside of their Silverado. Last but not least, there's also going to be our wiring harness. Now, if you want to do it the hard way, you can go ahead and splice this in or the preferred way. Um, for our Silverado, we do have a plug-in option, so all we'll have to do is just match up our wiring for our harness that comes with our kit with our plug-in adapter. But if you do want to splice it in, you're going to have four wires. Your black is going to be your power. Your white will be your ground. Your blue will be for your trailer brakes. And then your red is going to hook into the brake light switch wire. To make things easier, I'm just going to go ahead and connect this all right now. That way I'm not having to do it under the dash. So we'll just take a butt connector. You're going to get a few with your uh, wiring harness adapter if you do choose to buy that. But if not, you can go ahead and just pick up some here as well. And we'll just crimp those all on. and then connect them up to our wiring harness adapter. Last, I'm gonna go ahead and pop on our wiring harness onto here, and then we will go ahead and start plugging it in inside of our vehicle. We're gonna have a couple little different ports on here, but we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we choose this one right here. We'll have our little retention clip to the left, and then we'll go ahead and just pop that right in. And then we can push our cover kind of back in place. We're gonna have to kind of fight these wires just a bit and then we're gonna zip tie them up out of the way. You don't want that kind of hanging down. So right now I'm gonna kind of just push them up just so that we can get the cover back in place. All right, with that back in place, we can go ahead and take our OBD2 sensor wire and we'll plug that right in. And then I'm gonna grab some zip ties and kind of just bundle up all this wiring so that it doesn't interfere with our brake or our gas pedal. Lastly, we'll just need to hook in our cable for our controller. Pop that in. And then we're gonna run it up over, right over here and use our little mount that comes with it. It's just gonna be a little stick on piece that all you have to do is just peel back the adhesive backing and then you can kind of just press it anywhere on your dash. Uh, so I think we'll go ahead and we'll put it right about here. That way it's easily within reach, but it's not going to be in the way. If you want to go the extra mile, you can also just sneak it right up through your dash here. That way you don't have to worry about this kind of dangling down near the brake pedal. And then pop it into place. Now that we have our installation complete, we can go ahead and take it out, hook up to a trailer, and give you a little test. So now that we're hooked up to a trailer, we can see right in the corner right here, it's gonna say C, and that stands for connected. If we weren't, it would say NC. Um, right in the middle right here is our fault um, little diagnostics portion, and that's just saying okay right now, because there's just nothing wrong with our trailer connection, but if there was, then we can go ahead and take whatever error code it gives us, look in our instruction manual, and figure out exactly what we need to fix. So now we're gonna go ahead and just drive a little bit. We'll see. When I press on the brakes, it's going to start showing the output. So right now, since we're at a low speed, I've also got it set really low. It's not going to be putting out as much. We don't really need too much braking power. We don't want it to kind of 
lock the brakes up and have us kind of clang up against our ball mount here. Now, your settings aren't going to matter at all if you do the manual override, so you've got a little bit of trailer sway, and you just need to kind of correct that. When you press on this, this will go all the way up to 100. So right now, I got my foot away from the brakes, and I'm just gonna have our trailer stop us just to show. But yeah, that can go all the way up to 100 and back down. Well, that about does it for today's installation of the Tucson Direct Link Trailer Brake Controller here on our 2018 Chevy Silverado 1500. My name's Kevin. Thanks for watching.